Hello everyone and welcome to the Vanguard Fitness Hour. This is a special Aloha edition I'm calling it and uh, as always even though I'm traveling I'm on the road I'm still making sure that I'm playing it safe. I'm following all COVID-19 uh, safety protocol and I'm making sure that I'm protecting both myself and others as well. So with that being said I'm going to go ahead and remove my mask and start this broadcast. So I am really grateful that you all have taken the time to join me for this uh, this edition, very special edition. Uh, a little bit different, the time frame uh, is off a bit just because of the time difference. There's a five hour difference between where I am right now and uh, where you may be watching. Uh, so please keep that in mind. So, as always, we've got 20 pounds of fitness, inspiration, motivation, and information to stuff into a 10 pound bag. So we're going to get going and get right into it. So. Um, the format of the show is going to be a little different. You know, I don't have the music. I don't have uh, a lot of the uh, accessories that I typically have when I promote the show and broadcast. Uh, but that's because I decided, you know what, let's do it in a natural setting, natural environment. First time I've ever done a broadcast outdoors, so this is exciting for me as well. Uh, if, in case you don't know, uh, you may be looking because of the attire, uh, maybe the lay that's around my neck right now. I am currently in Maui, Hawaii. I'm on the island, island of Maui. cortisol levels and uh, reduce, I'm sorry, control psychological stress. Uh, so cortisol is basically known as the stress hormone. It's naturally occurring within the body. Uh, however, when those cortisol levels get out of control, there can be de uh, just uh, devastating physical, psychological uh, uh, effects of that. So that was my topic. Uh, so it was a great opportunity to be flown out here. Uh, to meet some wonderful people, to present some val valuable information that people can use in their everyday lives to manage through this brand new pandemic situation, particularly those that are under undue stress uh, and how the, they can use exercise to mitigate some of the uh, negative ramifications of excessive levels of stress. So uh, it's been a pleasure to be able to do that. Uh, I've got one presentation left and then a little bit of time to just kind of relax probably about 78 79 uh, degrees somewhere in there uh, it's sunny it's been sunny every day so there uh, the weather forecaster out here must have the most boring job ever because every day I've been it's 79 and Sunday 81 and sunny uh, 79 and sunny so it's just on and on but it is beautiful fantastic to be out here uh, so uh, that is part of what's new with the fitness group so I'm jumping right into that letting you know what's going on with it uh, next topic I'm in the process of scheduling some great guests uh, for the remainder of the season. In fact, I got one of them coming up next week that I'm going to be sharing with you toward the end of the broadcast. Uh, but I got some fantastic people within the health, wellness, fitness industry uh, that are really going to provide you with some information that's going to benefit you in the long run on your fitness journey. So happy to do that. Uh, just locking down some dates and, and scheduling and that sort of thing. But it's going to happen. Looking forward to sharing that information with all of you. Um, Next up, I'm in development for an online fitness program. Now, uh, I was very specific on what I wanted this to be. It's going to be exclusively and primarily for individuals that are very serious minded in terms of making some long term, practical, physical, spiritual, uh, psychological, lifestyle changes. Uh, not the fly by night kind of person that just wants to lose a few pounds for uh, a special event. This is for people that want to improve themselves in the long run, that are, are dedicated to what they want to do. I'm always 
always transparent with the audience and with you guys know what's going on uh, with me, what I'm uh, participating in, uh, what I'm experiencing, whether it be negative or positive. That's that's uh, that, that's uh, basically all part of it. So my intermittent fasting. So uh, I mentioned at the start of season two um, that I was starting an intermittent fasting routine. So basically, intermittent fasting. I'm utilizing a 16-8 routine where all my meals are consumed within an eight-hour time frame. 16 hour uh, and uh, the remainder of the time I'm basically fasting. So it's really actually it's not that difficult to do. I'm basically skipping uh, breakfast. So with that, having been on on this location here and away from home uh, for the past almost week now, uh, that has gone out of my house because my time schedules are screwed up. Uh, it's still taking me a while to get used to the, the, the time difference. You know, I'm waking up at super early hours here because that's my regular time back home. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really been an adjustment. two articles that I picked that I want to share with the audience uh, and tell you about. The first one is two things that you need to stop doing before your COVID vaccine. And I know there's still a lot of controversy out there. Um, should I get the vaccine? Should I not get the vaccine? Is it effective? Um, which vaccine should I take? Should it be Johnson & Johnson? Should it be uh, Pfizer? Should it be Moderna? That sort of thing. So there's a lot of questions out there. And now with the variants, is the vaccine going to be effective? Should I get a variant? Um, and I've seen a couple of news stories about a grouping of individuals in Florida that um, received that, that were basically infected with the virus post-vaccine. So, you know, what are the decisions that are going to be made? So this is for people that uh, do intend to take the vaccination. Uh, so I found this wonderful article uh, about things that need to be done or stop doing before you actually uh, receive the vaccination. So. Uh, there's several reasons for this because certain things that you can do can actually affect the efficacy of the vaccine itself. So, first one, uh, resist or do not take over-the-counter medications. Uh, I know a lot of people, I've seen a lot of studies on this, in order to mitigate the effects of the vaccination, uh, and people have heard about you know, drowsiness or soreness, uh, fatigue, um, a, a, a general feeling of malaise, those sorts of things. Uh, so they're trying to kind of medic pre-medicate. I don't know if that's an actual term, but if it's not, maybe I should coin that. Uh, so they're medicating themselves beforehand in anticipation of the effects that they're going to they anticipate receiving after they get the vaccination. So um, a lot of painkillers, that sort of thing, uh, things to kind of boost energy. Uh, it is not recommended that you do this. Uh, so if you do intend to get the vaccination, avoid pre-medication, particularly over the counter meds before you actually receive the vaccination. It can offset the effectiveness of the vaccination uh, and it can also cause, cause some side effects uh, that are totally separate from what you get when you normally get the vaccine. So on top of whatever side effects you may get after the vaccine, you might be opening the door to a whole slew of new ones. So you want to make sure that you're very uh, careful about that. Now, however, once you do receive the vaccine, uh, you know, feel free to take your medications as needed. Um, you know, for pain and, and that sort of thing. But obviously you want to make sure that you can still be in a position for doing so. The second one, do not drink alcohol the night before your vaccination. So um, you make want to make sure that you eliminate that from your consumption intake. Uh, do not drink alcohol because basically what it does when you consume alcohol, it taxes the immune system. So the last thing you need is your immune system already being in a jeopardized position before you receive your vaccination. So uh, make sure that you do not have drinks the night before your vaccine. All right, uh, next up, uh, don't get any other vaccines before you get your COVID-19 vaccine. So you don't want to basically stack vaccines. Uh, so if you're considering getting, uh, you know, the flu vaccine or uh, any of the others that might be out here at the time, you want to avoid doing that before your COVID-19 vaccine. And even afterwards, you want to leave at least a two-week window 
in between the COVID vaccine and whatever your secondary vaccine might be. So keep that in mind also. And uh, then one more, you want to make sure that uh, you don't need to worry about getting a COVID test uh, if you are asymptomatic before receiving the COVID-19 vaccination. So uh, if that is the case, uh, you know, you're not feeling any symptoms, you're fine and that sort of thing, there's not a need to go out and say, well, you know, I, I need to get tested before just to see if I have it before I get the vaccine. You don't need to do that. Okay? Uh, so if you are asymptomatic, don't worry about that. Uh, so again, uh, just some precautions to take before you decide to make that decision to get that, that vaccine. So I want to share that with you. The next story, article number two, is one that I really found interesting just because I'm very into nutrition and diet and proper eating. Uh, and I, I, I also, um, and I'm not going to say I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I, I'm very concerned about what food producers and food manufacturers do to the food foods that we put into our body. Some cases, I believe, a lot of the decisions that are made uh, when food is packaged and put on store shelves are almost unfairness and almost designed to keep us in a state where we are unhealthy uh, because, you know, basically it comes down to follow the money. When you have a population that is dealing with illness, that uh, are struggling with their health, uh, it's making the cash register ring. Healthy people do not uh, generate nearly as much income as sick people. This one ingredient found in 1,250 snack foods may harm your immune system. Now, why am I talking about the immune system? Because, well, simply, it's in the uh, it's, in, it's in the public eye right now. Every story that you hear when you're talking about the pandemic, when you're talking about COVID-19, the coronavirus, whatever the case might be, uh, how is it affecting the immune system? Because once an immune system is compromised, uh, you're basically opening the door to the very negative side effects of serious side effects and complications if, should they become infected with the coronavirus. So this article deals with food manufacturers and the way that foods are packaged and put on the shelves and offered to us uh, by food manufacturers, by people that provide the foods on the store shelves that we consume every day. This has to do with an, an ingredient called uh, turk, and I've been studying this so hopefully I don't get this wrong. It's turk butyl hydroquinone. Yes, I nailed it, that's what I wanted to say. Also known as TBHQ. TBHQ is a preservative that's added to foods to basically prolong shelf life, to uh, help maintain freshness, uh, to main, uh, maintain good colorization. All those things that make foods appealing to us when we see it in the store. You know, these bright, vibrant colors, uh, these great smells, that sort of thing. Uh, TBHQ helps to prevent something called oxidation. So when oxidation takes place, oxygen is to a food product. Once that happens, discoloration starts to occur. Um, you know, those vibrant colors start to fade. Think of an example, uh, you know, a pack of, pack of ground beef. You might let it sit out for a little while, and when you picked it up initially, bright red, you know, it, it looks fresh, it looks healthy, or whatever the case might be. But after it sits for a little while, it starts to lose some of that, cal that, uh, that coloriz colorization. Uh, it's not that vibrant red, it's maybe uh, a, a darker brown. Uh, and then if you let it sit long enough, it starts to almost take on a grayish kind of look. That doesn't necessarily mean that the meat is bad, but it does, uh, it's not quite as visually appealing, right? So, uh, food manufacturers don't want this. Nobody's going to buy gray looking meat. So they want, so they add preservatives to those, uh, those food items to keep them fresh. The same with packaged goods. Uh, so TBHQ is added to, again, uh, present, maintain good colorization, maintain shelf life. You know, keep it fresher longer, we can keep it on the shelves longer, it's going to reduce our cost, we don't have to carry as much inventory, that sort of thing. Um, it uh, maintains odor. So when oxidation takes place, foods don't smell quite as good as they once did. So uh, there's a lot of benefits to, on the food manufacturer's uh, side to make sure that, you know, TBHQ is used. And, you know, because it basically comes down to helping to maintain profits. 
On the bad side of it, DBHQ does uh, several things, and it's recently, recently been found that it could cause harm or suppress immune system function. Uh, so, of course, in this day and age, we need to make sure that we are maintaining a healthy immune system as much as possible. Foods that contain TBHQ prevent that, so you really want to get in the habit of professors all the time. Read those food labels, know what's in the foods that you're putting into your body, be familiar with them, don't be uh, discouraged because you look at something that's got 28 letters in the name of it. Find out what those 28 letters mean. Take the time, investigate, do your research, don't just blindly eat stuff, right? So, uh, TBHQ, uh, again, it has been shown uh, to tamper with immune system function. And uh, the F FDA and, uh, has found that TBHQ in small or trace amounts is acceptable, right? So two-tenths of a percent uh, in either the fat or oil content of this particular, uh, particular food preservative is deemed to be okay. However, as much as, I'm sorry, as little as uh, five grams of TBHQ has been known to cause death or result in death. So a little bit of it is, it is okay. Uh, but if you step into five grams of it, it's, it's, uh, it's considered fatal. Now, my position is, why would I even want to risk it? Even if it's in low doses, if I don't have to. Um, I, I don't really, I'm not a proponent of rolling the dice when it comes to my own health and wellness. Um, so I, I, I take pride in doing that. I want you to take pride in doing that also. So, again, reading those food labels, TBHQ uh, is the product that we're talking about. Uh, there's a great quote in here. Sometimes we visualize families and individuals will turn the package for us, and that just makes sense. You got uh, kids, you got to take care of, you got meals, you got to prepare, you got chores, you got work life. You know, all these things going on around us. A lot of times, meal prep falls by the back burner. It's much easier to rely on someone else to take care of for you. Uh, you know, a food delivery service, some fast food restaurant, that sort of thing. Uh, and packaged foods, you know, if they provide convenience. That's why, uh, uh, what do you call it? TV dinners became so popular in the 50s, uh, as you know, in the 60s, when the, um, I'm not trying to be sexist or anything like that, but the uh, woman was in the household and wife was stepping outside of the household and now taking on uh, working roles. So it wasn't that um, position where all oh, the woman stays home and cooks and cleans and that sort of thing. Now, uh, people were branching out, and to accommodate for that lack of time, now we're going to have these prepackaged meals that are, that are going to be speedy, uh, you know, no mess, no fuss, no fuss, that sort of thing. So, uh, preservatives came into to play because when you're doing that, there's a living shelf life associated with it. So, uh, there's a big reason for that. It's, uh, it goes on to say that avoiding such products, we're talking about this product, and not just because of TBHQ, but also because of the added salt and sugars and uh, processed fats uh, and other additives that go in a few foods. You want to make sure that you avoid them. Consume them in limited quantities if possible. Um, so let me just name, and I've talked about TBHQ, and I'm going to amuse myself again by saying that name, Terkbutyl Hydroquinone. Here's some four primary foods that contain it. And again, there are a ton of TBHQ. If you flip that on the back, and I just went into a, a local grocery store stocking up my um, my uh, sweet, and uh, just just out of curiosity because I had already read the article, and it's there in plain, plain of sight, uh, right in plain day. Uh, TBHQ is listed on the ingredient list. So Pop Tarts is number one. So you might want to go for healthy options, maybe just wheat toast or something like that. Maybe. Uh, homemade preservative, something that you're actually control, controlling the uh, nutritional content of. So you might want to look at some healthy options. Number two, Cheez-Its, those little uh, uh, orangish uh, uh, crackers or whatever. I don't know what those things are made out of. But Cheez-Its, high amounts of TBHQ. Uh, that's another very popular item that has it. The next are
are Rice Krispie Treats. Now, I remember the first time I ever had a Rice Krispie Treat was in grade school. Uh, they would actually make it in the kitchen. Uh, and it's basically, if I remember properly, uh, Rice Krispies, marshmallows, sometimes they'd add peanut butter to them, and butter. And they melt this, this uh, mixture up, uh, pack it down, let it cool, and it comes in these, uh, these shapes in these little sticky squares. Well, the uh, food product manufacturers, in this case Kellogg's, has basically made it more convenient to get uh, rice krispie treats. Now, no longer is it something that's baked in the home kitchen. Uh, we're going to wrap them up, package them, and sell them to you. High amounts of TBHQ in rice krispie treats. So, uh, the fourth and final, this might hurt the feelings of a lot of people because I know there are some, uh, some very devout consumers of this snack food, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Now, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, believe it or not, were not all that bad uh, when they initially came out. Uh, this is when uh, they were actually just Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. They basically reduced the natural cocoa powder or cocoa that was in the product and replaced it uh, with uh, you know, uh, basically chemical preservatives. So it's not nearly as, uh, um, I don't want to say healthy, uh, but it's, it doesn't have nearly uh, the amount of negative uh, effects that are in the product now. So these are all four snack foods that they should be treats. Uh, again, you want to consume those kinds of things in moderation anyway, but now that you know that TBHQ is something that can suppress uh, or hamper the immune system, it's probably best to take a So what I'm going to do, because there are just too many items on the list to which is Vanguard Exercise Management, um, and also my Instagram page, which is Vanguard MGT, followed by the number one. I'm going to post that up so you have a chance to look at it yourself. I'm sure if you do, you'll probably go through your uh, shelves at home, your uh, cupboard space, and that sort of thing. You're going to find a lot of those things right in your own home. So, TBHQ, make sure that you're aware of that. Next up that I wanted to share with you, um, let's see, where am I? Oh, our show, uh, Vanguard Commentary. So, this is where I basically come in and I just talk off the cuff about whatever topic that I deem to be necessary or important or feedback that I get from uh, viewers that uh, ask about certain things and ask me to elaborate on them. Uh, my topic for the day is, because I am currently traveling, it is dietary and nutritional changes while traveling. So what do I mean by that? Uh, I typically follow Even if it's uh, business travel like I'm doing right now, I still got time to get out and do, do things that are fun and exciting and, and different. Uh, so the tendency, because I am away from home, not by my own kitchen, um, I'm kind of at the mercy of you know, what's around me. So I need to make you know, healthy decisions and, and, and uh, those food choices that I normally do. I don't want to get too far off base. So what I have done, um, I kind of, uh, when I first got in, you know, I said, you know, I've been well things. I'm on this intermittent fasting. Trust me, that can come back to haunt you. Uh, so I had a great meal last night. Uh, some of the uh, partners uh, with the organization that went uh, to Luau. So I went to this Luau, and it was basically an all-you-can-eat Luau. So you get to sample all these different things and foods. And although there were healthy food options there, you know, I tried a few things that were off that healthy uh, nutritional track, right? And today, oh man, I just I don't feel right. I'm not quite myself. get 
back on track. So uh, I'm going to find myself a nice big salad somewhere, uh, and I'm going to make sure I stay away from the freezer. based off of this commentary, should you do, decide to travel, and a lot of places are opening up now, and travel is starting to become uh, something that's more uh, widely accepted, uh, you want to make sure that you still make the decisions necessary to keep yourself healthy and safe as possible. So, uh, keep that in mind. So, that is the Vanguard commentary. That leads me directly into today's show topic, which is fitness and travel. Whether it's business, uh, pleasure travel, whatever the case might be, um, when it comes to fitness, it doesn't have to take a vacation, right? You still want to make sure that you are focused on maintaining or becoming as healthy as possible. It's not a break from becoming fit, you know, just because I'm, I'm uh, away from home, I can go crazy and do what I want to do and uh, ditch my workouts and that sort of thing. No, it does not mean that. You're just working out, you're just exercising, you're just taking care of yourself in a different setting. That's really all that is. So it does take planning, however, when you try to combine fitness and travel, because the two are not necessarily mutually exclusive. One does not have to prohibit the existence of the other. They can work hand in hand. It just takes some planning and some work to make sure you're doing that the right way. Uh, so when it comes to fitness and travel, i got some tips I want to share with you. Uh, and a lot, all of these I have implemented myself, so I'm not just talking out of the side of my neck. I'm just uh, I'm throwing you things out that I found in some magazine or whatever. These are actual things that I do, uh, and I feel more confident talking about them because uh, these are things that I can speak off of from uh, my own personal experience. So, first one, uh, gym accessibility. So, what I did when I was booking, uh, making sure that all my arrangements were being taken care of and getting booked in that, one of the first questions I asked, does the place have a fitness facility? The answer in this case was yes. Um, so, you know, I was happy about that. So, I don't have to go off-site trying to find a location uh, where I can exercise and train and that sort of thing. Um, what you want to do is make sure you ask about fitness room availability. First of all, is it there? And then second of all, uh, how accessible is it? Now, we're in, still in this COVID-19 pandemic world. So, there are a lot of restrictions. You know, a lot of, uh, you know, so, some hotels, their fitness facilities are completely shut down. Others have limited access. The property that I'm on right now limits their participants to four in the fitness room, just four people at a time. So you make sure you need to make sure you're scheduling that properly uh, as well. Um, capacity limits. Uh, what type of equipment is in the fitness facility? Should the property that you're staying at have a fitness location? Uh, so you know, are there treadmills? Are there elliptical trainers? Are there stationary bikes? Free weights? Machine weights? Um, you know, dumbbells? You know, whatever the case might be. Find out what's there so that way you can plan your exercise routine accordingly. You know, if you know that there is no, uh, there are no treadmills, no cardiovascular machines available, uh, then you want to make sure you, have, you, you go to go the next step. Is there a place uh, near the property where I can jump? on site is my suggestion. If it is uh, you know, it's an area where it's safe to do so and um, it's, uh, it's accessible, it's not, you're not going to go out of your way doing so, skip that car. If you don't need it, if you're able to walk to a destination, or better yet, make it fun, if you're able to bike to your destination, to a restaurant, to a local park, uh, to a special event that's taking, a place, taking place and that sort of thing, uh, consider doing that. Even if you do get a rental and you got some areas that you can walk to, Enjoy the scenery, depending on where you are. Uh, get a little bit of exercise in and use that to your advantage. You don't have to drive everywhere that you go uh, if you don't have to. So again, make sure you keep safety in mind. Make sure you keep accessibility and convenience in mind also. All right, be careful about that. Be smart about it. Clothing. Instead of packing you know, multiple uh, uh, exercise uh, uh, clothing and sports, 
sportswear and that sort of thing on top of your regular clothing, try to uh, make an adjustment. Go for clothing that can serve a, a dual purpose role. So whether it be some uh, you know, pair of sweatpants and a, a top, something that you can wear to, um, you know, out to an, a function or an event and still work out in. That's going to help you to conserve space. Uh, if you are going to be making sure that you're uh, packing up clothes and bringing outfits that are going to be exclusively for exercise and working out, you want to make sure that you've got um, you know, clothing that's going to be you know, breathable, lightweight, and your comfortable workout gear. And if you're going to be staying for a long period of time, consider um, making sure making arrangements to wash all your outfits and make sure that that's available. Because when you work out, things get sweaty, and uh, more so than just damp clothing, clothing that's soaked with perspiration, uh, really going to can ruin the fabric. They told me they had cardiovascular equipment. I brought a jump rope. So I love jumping rope. It's a great form of cardio. I love doing it. So I made sure that I had that available and in my bag. Also, I'm a glove person. You get a lot of people that don't really care to wear gloves. So I always make sure that I pack my gloves with me. Uh, so when I'm getting out and working out, I got those convenient and handy. always important to me because it uh, helps to support so many other movies that I do when I'm in the gym, so I make sure I bring my hand grip strengthener. And the nice thing about this, you can do it anywhere, it's very small, convenient, I can adjust, with this one I can adjust the tension, I can make uh, adjust the uh, tension higher, or I can lessen it if I want to. Uh, so even on the plane if I wanted to, I just want to kind of work on my position, I can this way.
hours or whatever to get here. Um, it takes a long, you know, so I'm on that plane for a long time. So the uh, longer flights, the airline will serve snacks. Now, typically, the snacks are filled with garbage, right? So I got in mind my little snack bag. Now, I did get some water. I got this little, uh, I don't know, six ounce bottle of water, something like that. Um, but within that, in addition to that bottle of water, uh, I got these little caramel wafers. Uh, I got a bag of pretzels. They have this uh, little sandwich cookie. So, you know, not the stuff I want to be, you know, stuff on my face. So I brought on some healthy snacks, had them convenient in my carry-on bag that were accessible, that alleviated the temptation to uh, consume uh, things that were provided by the airline. And this, I'm not going to name the airline, but um, it, it gave me some healthy options. So uh, consider doing that. Package uh, with you some healthy travel snacks. Once you're on site at the property, I've been doing a lot of this, um, I find for two reasons. One, for safety. I always like to know where my exits are, right? So where are the fire stairs, that sort of thing. Uh, so once I located those, um, I use the stairs as opposed to waiting on the elevator. Number one, uh, I get impatient. I don't like waiting on the elevator a lot of times. And two, it's just another way to squeeze in some, uh, some exercise time. So as opposed to waiting on that elevator, I'll grab the stairwells and I'll take the stairs up and down in my room, wherever I gotta do. Just another way to make sure I'm getting in some exercise. Ask at your front desk or your concierge if they have any existing partnerships with local gyms. This is going to benefit you because a lot of gyms do that. You know, they may have a exercise facility on the site, they may not. A lot of times these hotel chains, particularly the large ones, will establish relationships with local gyms where you know you feed them business and you know for doing that, um, you know, maybe they get a percentage uh, of a referral fee or something like that. The gym benefits because they'll sell these temporary memberships, either daily passes, or they can uh, calculate it based on their stay. exercise-based activities. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't have to be centered around restaurants and eating. You know, it's amazing how many people go on vacation to eat, and then they come back, you know, why am I 10 pounds heavy? You know, because you were sitting up eating every chance you got. So you don't have to plan exercises around eating. Plan exercise, uh, plan activities based on activities uh, that keep you moving, that are designed to keep you healthy, and there are a lot of them out here. Um, my suggestion, try something new. Get out of your old habits. Suggestions. Uh, depending on where you are. In an environment like this, you know, there's snorkeling, uh, there's surfing. Uh, never done surfing before, but I am going to give it a shot. Uh, snorkeling, great exercise. Um, dancing, you know, a lot of places will have dancing uh, classes or workshops or groups or events and that sort of thing. Uh, hiking, you know, depending again on the set. This is uh, not only is this an ocean view setting, but it's also a mountain, uh, mountainous uh, setting as well. So a lot of hiking opportunities that are available. Uh, all else fails, online classes, bring your laptop, computer, that sort of thing. If you got a favorite DVD, uh, you know, maybe bring that with you so you can work on, along with it while you're away from home. So just another way to keep yourself healthy and moving. Uh, choose healthy meal options. Choose your restaurants wisely, particularly if you're on a, uh, a serious mission on getting fit, losing weight, and that sort of thing. You know, a lot of times the, the restaurant may not tell you what the place is right away. The street, there's a, a place called Pizza, Pizza Paradiso, um, and I did. That's one of the, the poor decisions that I made. I said I was going to treat myself to pizza, and I went there and oh man, that was not a good idea. So, um, pay attention to the places that you're going to be consuming your foods. Um, you know, ask the same questions, get the same information that you do back home. Items home to the kitchenette, put them in the uh, refrigerator, 
and I've been, you know, making my own breakfast and lunches and, and that sort of thing. I will go out also, but, you know, it gives me the opportunity to kind of, again, get back to that feeling of control that I have when it comes to my meal plan. So, uh, if you're able to and you don't mind it, you know, I happen to really like cooking. So, meal prep is not a chore for me. I like cooking. So, that's an option that I take advantage of, full advantage of. Um, treat yourself. Hey, you're on vacation, right? It doesn't always have to be strict. Uh, you know, find it. Want to go to some place that's known for these great desserts, or maybe uh, some place that has these awesome drinks? Go ahead, treat yourself, have fun with it. You know, uh, loosen up. That's what vacation is all about: having fun, unwinding, detaching, uh, and uh, forgetting about all the cares and uh, concerns about your everyday life. Uh, particularly if on pleasure travel, but if you can do it on business travel, maybe get a little of that time also. You know, consider doing that. As well. And then finally, if you are not able to get access to any type of fitness activity. Consider that when you are traveling for business, um, for pleasure, sorry. All right, so fitness and travel, that was my topic of the week. My fitness tip of the week, I want to write this down. It's funny that I say writing things down because it does have to do with documenting things. It's called post-it power. What I suggest is getting yourself a, uh, a little package of those uh, post-it notes and taking some time. as a reminder to avoid fast food restaurants. So whatever be creative as you want, but use that as post-it notes. Use that as uh, a method to make sure that you stay focused, you stay healthy. All right, so that's my suggestion for that one. Post-it power is my fitness tip of the week. Next up is my exercise of the week. Now, again, my mat that I have behind me has uh, drifted away a little bit, but I'm gonna try to position this camera so that you can see what I'm actually doing. This exercise is designed to target the rectus abdominis. For those that are unfamiliar with that term, it basically means my abs, my abdominal muscles. It's called the elevated crunch. So I don't wanna mess up this. Yeah, I think I'll be all right doing this and lay around my neck. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna reposition the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Right, if I can get that moved over just a little bit. There we go. All right, so with the elevated crunch, what I'm going to do is this, this kind of a position, right? I want to come back flat on my back, pressing my shoulders into the back. Okay? I'm going to bring the palms down. Center. So let's do this. The challenges of producing your own. Alright, so got that out of the way. Last thing is uh, next week show. So next week, I'm uh, going to be back to our regular time. That's 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And I've got 
an exciting guest that's going to be coming on with me. Uh, her name is Miss Jacinta Love, and she is uh, better known as the Vegan Treat Lady. She basically creates vegan uh, uh, bakeries that are you know, designed around health. They're using natural ingredients. Um, they are uh, gluten-free. They are